Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this 1 144th scale B17G from Minicraft. I'd been considering getting a B17 for a while and this one was cheap so I figured why not. On the back of the box we see… nothing. Well, the front of the box isn't too bad looking. There's a picture of Mercy's Madhouse which is one of the two bombers you can build from this kit, the other being Screaming Eagle. I haven't built anything from Minicraft models before, so let's have a look. The plastic comes in bags. There's a separate bag for the clear sprue for some reason, probably to prevent scratching. The sprues don't look the best. The first one here has quite a bit of flashing. Thankfully it's mostly around the sprue frame, rather than on the model parts, though there is some there too. A fair bit of cleanup is definitely going to be required. I think this is probably a fairly old tooling, which really shouldn't be surprising owing to its low price. The detailing is, well, it's not super detailed. I mean, it's okay, and planes like this are kind of smooth anyway, and at this scale a lot of the panel lines and bumps and things wouldn't really be noticeable. But the detail is definitely lacking. This is not a kit for rivet counters, they would probably catch fire. I do think it would be pretty good for use with Flames of War though, maybe as a terrain piece either intact or wrecked. Also in the box we find this set of instructions. The actual instructions only take up the first page, and they seem simple and clear enough. The two centre pages are painting and decal guides for both Screaming Eagle and Mercy's Madhouse. The last page talks about decal application which is probably quite helpful, especially to a beginner. And here are those decals. It looks like there are decals for a lot of the windows, which I like. There are clear plastic bits but I'm probably going to paint over those, so these decals might be helpful. They look to be pretty good quality too. On to building. The first step is to join the two halves of the fuselage together. I test fit because test fitting is best fitting, and it shows me this isn't going to be the best fit ever. Before gluing the fuselage together, we have to install the clear plastic for the cockpit. <laughs> cockpit. I'm a mature adult. This seems to fit okay. I'm just using plastic cement here because I'm not worried about any fogging because I'll just be painting over this part. At any rate, it turns out the glue didn't cause any issues with the plastic part anyway. I then add the tail wheel at the rear, obviously. I'm building a landed version so this wheel is in the down position, though I'm not entirely sure if I've put it on right. Then the horizontal stabilizers need to be installed before the fuselage halves go together. I do like that this is a single piece, it makes it easier to get both sides on level rather than at odd angles. Because I'm a numpty though, I did almost forget to install it. I left that part unglued until after the main body was together, which I glued together next. Because I know it's not going to be a great fit, I do it in sections, starting at the tail. I hold the parts in place long enough for the glue to bond and then I move towards the front. There are some guide pins here to help get things lined up, and this isn't especially tricky but it can take a bit of time. I think this model is going to need some filling before it gets painted, though I won't be doing either of those things in this video. When the fuselage is glued together, I apply glue to the horizontal stabilizers. There's a bit of play in these parts and nothing to really lock them into place, so you have to kind of eyeball it. I think I more or less got it in the correct position though. There's a bit of a gap where the stabiliser slots through the fuselage but that's not really surprising and should easily be fixed with a little bit of putty. A plane probably isn't much good without wings, so I glue the wings together next. These come as two parts per wing, and it's pretty easy to do. There aren't any guide pins but the shape of the parts is helpful in getting things lined up. The fit is okay. I still had to do a bit of clean up around the edges where the parts join. I then attach the wings to the fuselage. There are some big slots in the side of the fuselage into which the wings fit. You can't miss them. The fit is okay though there is a noticeable gap where the parts join. Again, something that needs a bit of attention with some putty. Engines are next. Gotta have engines. These parts go together pretty easily. I slot the propellers into the hole in the front of the engine cowling parts. There's a ring here that goes over the end of the propeller shaft. <laughs> shaft. I assume this is to prevent the propeller from falling out if you want to leave them so they rotate, but I just fill the entire area with glue so that it's all locked into place. I suppose doing it this way means I don't really need the ring, but I put it on anyway because it might add some strength. 
I then glue those assemblies onto the obvious locations on the wings. They fit well enough, though I found it a little bit hard to apply pressure to the parts without bending the propeller blades. My propellers don't line up exactly with each other, and it looks a little bit messy, but I don't really think that matters. Next, I put together the landing gear. This is very simple. The inside of the wheel looks pretty crappy, but I guess it could be worse. And if you really wanted to, you could fix that with green stuff too. Either way, the wheel slots onto the short protrusion at the bottom of the landing gear. I glue this assembly into place. There's a bit of keying in the upper surface of the inside of the wing, into which the end of the landing gear should sit. It doesn't really lock into anything though, so you have to kind of eyeball its positioning. I'm not really sure I got this right, but it looks okay to me. The landing gear can also be modelled in the raised position, using the same parts, though I obviously haven't done that. Only a few small details to add now. At this point I drill holes for the waste guns. It's a little bit hard to see, but there's an outline showing where to drill, and that's pretty easy to do, it's just drilling a hole after all. I widen the hole a tiny bit to accommodate the guns, and then I don't put the guns in place, because this is a good spot to hold the plane, and it would be very easy to break those guns off, so I'll leave them till later. Instead, I install some of those clear plastic parts, like this roof window bit. The fit was pretty tight, in fact I couldn't get it out again after test fitting, so I just glued it into place. Then the tail gunner's position goes in here under the rudder. There's not really anything to guide this, but you can eyeball it fairly easily. Then there's a ball turret on the belly. <laughs> ball. This one doesn't need any guns installed. I'm building Mercy's madhouse. On that plane the ball turret was replaced by a radar dome. The instructions said so. So the slots for the gun barrel will need to be filled in. This part goes into place very easily. Then on top of the nose I install this, I guess, observation dome? This isn't too hard to get into place. I then install the guns on the top turret. This is one part, which makes installation easy and much less fiddly than if they were single parts. I install the turret into the top of the plane like so. It doesn't look especially aerodynamic, but it does look very shooty. I then install the nose window thing. This is simple. There's a guide pin in the middle, though there's still quite a bit of play in the part, so make sure you've got it as centered as you can. Then I install the guns into the chin turret part. Unlike on the top turret, these are single parts, and it was a little bit fiddly to install them. Obviously I wasn't paying close enough attention and was holding the parts out of frame. This is what the turret ended up looking like. I left it for the glue to set and then installed the nose machine guns, assuming that's what you'd call these. These are tiny fiddly parts, but they weren't especially hard to install. I even got away without using tweezers for them. The mounting points for these are fairly obvious. I then install the chin turret. This doesn't fit very well at all. There's a big opening in the front of the plane here, and I spent some time looking for a part that I thought maybe I'd missed that should fill it. There is no such part, so I just sort of sit the turret in there. There are two flat parts on either side of the opening that it sits on. After a bunch of fiddling I add glue and leave it be. It looks a little bit messy, oh well. I then install the tail guns. Again, they're tiny fiddly bits of plastic, but I managed to get them into place without tweezers. They did need a bit of fiddling to get them aligned and neat looking though. And finally, the waste guns. I glue those into the holes I drilled for them earlier, and they're easy enough to get into place. From this point on I need to be extra careful when handling the model. I'm quite confident that all of these machine guns will break off easily. And that's it. The B-17G Mercy's Madhouse is now complete. Time to go bombing. Okay, so I don't build a lot of aircraft, so I can't really compare this to how other plane kits build up, but I do feel confident in saying that this is not the best model of a B-17 that you could get. It's not horrible, in my opinion, but it's definitely not perfect. And the detail really is lacking. You can tell what it is of course. But if you're looking for a really detailed display model, this is probably not it. Because this is the same scale that Flames of War use for their planes, I feel like there might be some use for this model in that game. I'm pretty sure there aren't any actual bomber rules, but you can always house rule stuff in. Or maybe you can use it as a terrain piece as I plan to do. I'm either going to base this model on a piece of runway, or more likely in a field, with the backstory that it has emergency landed in the field or something like that. 
I've only given it a little bit of thought so far, but I feel like if it had emergency landed in a field, it would lend itself to objective markers and interesting scenarios or something like that. I'm also kind of tempted to model this as crash landed, not just emergency landed. I know there's pictures of Mercy's madhouse crashed, so it could be realistic. So this was a pretty cheap kit, and that does show. It's probably also not a very recent tooling, and that shows too. That means I wouldn't feel too bad about modelling some damage on this plane. Maybe even a lot of damage. That said, the build wasn't too bad. Not the most fun I've had while building a model, but it wasn't bad. There was a fair bit of mould line cleanup that I had to do and some of the parts didn't quite fit perfectly, but the gaps should be pretty easy to fill in. I may still buy a better quality B-17. It is a big plane though, so I'm not really sure I'd have enough space for one of the really big kits that I've seen. I think maybe 172nd scale is probably about right though. It's not an immediate plan though, just something I would like to do eventually. Maybe I'm kind of rambling. So, what do you think of this kit? Let me know in the comments section below. And of course, if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media, and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. Links to all of those things are in the description below. I shall return soon, hopefully a little less sick sounding. Until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.